to M Studios. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you today for our master class, who's gonna be absolutely formidable. She is my sunshine. She is an MC. She is a digital strategist. She is a content producer. She is uh, a DJ. She is a rock star. She goes to festivals just because she can. And when she's on the decks, it's also because just she can. But it's been in the industry for a very long time. I've had the pleasure of hugging her. She didn't know that I still know her until I met her again this year. Ladies and gents, I present to some and introduce to others, Kath Grenefell. What's good, bro? That was such an amazing introduction. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. It is truly an honor, and I want to thank Old Mutual. You know, over the years of learning while I was working, one of the biggest things for me was teaching other people my knowledge and giving my knowledge. And it really is so important and so amazing that companies like Old Mutual get behind these sort of things, where we're sharing all of this information. So my name is Catherine. And I started working in radio in 2001. Before that, I studied at um, Pretoria Tech, where I studied lighting and sound, and then just happened to fall into radio. And I know it's terrible for people that are so desperate to get into radio to hear that, because it wasn't something that I was interested in, it wasn't something that I'd thought about, and I just happened to fall in, luckily, into this amazing medium. And I started at 5FM in 2001 with a breakfast show host, and I started producing the show. And at that stage, 5FM was in a, a place of, they'd been trying for a very long time to change from this rock station, a very white rock station. And they were trying to um, be more a youth station where it was loads of different music, so it was an amazing place to be in, but it was heavily male-driven. And so I started producing The Breakfast Show, and they wanted a female on the show. Now, bear in mind, I'd never, I, I wasn't interested in being on radio. It wasn't a thing. I was like there to do content, and I was there to produce this show. And it was very, like all of the people on that breakfast show were all males. So they interviewed a few people, a few females, to be on the show. And eventually the host said, I'm actually just going to put Catherine on. So she's obviously a female. She's a single mom. She's young. I was young then. And, um, and I was really into music, especially local music. My whole, when I was younger at school, I would go and watch bands and it was really a big thing for me. So I sort of ticked all of the boxes in terms of what they wanted in someone female on the show. And I think the reason that it worked so well is because I perhaps hadn't trained to be on radio. I was just a real normal girl that spoke about my problems, I spoke about my issues, I spoke about silly stories, and it resonated with the listener. And so I started this magical career, and I was still producing the show and being on air, and then Mark Gilman was leaving, he was the breakfast show host, and Fresh was joining in the afternoon. Now, I didn't even know that Fresh knew who I was, and he asked for me to produce his show, which like, was mind-blowing and absolutely incredible. And I started this magnificently beautiful journey with DJ Fresh. And we were on this afternoon drive show that I still think to this day is probably one of the best radio shows ever. And I know I'm biased, but we pushed boundaries. We spoke about a lot of things. It wasn't just entertainment. We spoke about hardcore topics. We got our listeners involved. We had a magnificent team where we all had different opinions and different ideas. And I think that that is so important when it comes to radio. And so I started this journey with DJ Fresh and then we moved to the breakfast show. And at the same time, 
I'd started lecturing at Boston Media House and I see a few of my students here, which just makes me so happy and I might start crying later because I miss them terribly. And I started this magnificent journey of teaching at the same time. And I remember one day teaching in class about this thing called um, burnout. So now you get two t different types of burnout. You obviously get a physical burnout when you work too hard and your body give gives in. But you also get a creative burnout. And I had realized within the, the two years, the last two years of working with Fresh, that I wasn't creatively giving my best. I would come into work, I would do my thing, I knew exactly what I was doing, I didn't feel like I was giving anything more. And I eventually had to reach that point where I said to him, listen, I think that you need a new producer on this show because you need someone that's going to give you more than what I'm giving you. And I spoke to 5FM and I said, please give me another show to work on. Bear in mind, like, Fresh and I, it was the most incredible team. I did not want to leave working with Fresh. But I also had to be 100% honest that I just creatively wasn't giving my best. So they moved me to another show with The Shady Lurker, which was also absolutely amazing to work on because he is like a firehouse. And he needed someone that could steer him in the right direction. Because if you do know Warwick The Shady Lurker, he says things before thinking about it. So it was an amazing year of working with someone um, that was completely different to Fresh. And, but then I also had to realize that it didn't matter that I'd moved to a different show, that I was working with someone else. I still creatively was not giving 100% to producing a radio show. And single mom, three kids, <coughs> And I had to make this decision that I had to leave. I had to actually go and try and do something else to get my creativity back, to get my like, excitement back in working. And I had, because when you work in radio, obviously you're doing a radio show, so you're working like three to five hours a day. If you're a content producer, you know you're always looking for content, but you can like freelance and you can do other things. So I was freelancing as a content social media producer where we go out and we film different events and I would do like sideline interviews. So I was doing like other things. And I thought to myself, if I leave 5FM, then I can do this all the time. And I can like choose what I wanna work on. And it was very exciting at the beginning. I had loads of work. Um, I was making money and I was like free sailing. And then suddenly, budgets are being cut and the work is like less and less and the fact is is that single mom three kids I've got lots of bills to pay I've got school fees to pay I've got a house etc I've got food it's not just me I'm looking after and I started taking money that I should have been paying here to try and pay this but then that's like spiraling out of control. And then this is spiraling out of control. And so I decided I'm gonna start sending my CV out. So I put myself out on every single biz community. I'm searching every single day for jobs. Bear in mind, I have been working at a high profile radio station where I have built a brand. I am a brand. I have my own opinion, I know who I am, I stand for something, people know who I am, is what I thought. <coughs> and I'm sending my CV out. Nothing. Not a response. Not you too qualified. Nothing. And can I tell you, at the age of 40, this was the most depressing thing that had ever happened to me in my entire life because how could they not look at that CV I worked with DJ Fresh for goodness sake <laughs> like I was like just respond I'm qualified for the job and so it spiraled to the point where I remember at one stage 
Um, my kids had gone to my folks on holiday, so I was alone at home. No freelance work. No one responding to my emails. And I think I stayed in my pajamas for like five days. I would get up, obviously go to the toilet, occasionally like make myself something to eat, but just lie there, watching Netflix, checking my mails, maybe someone's mailed me, maybe there's some work coming, absolutely nothing. And I have to say I was very lucky in the fact that I do have children because I knew that in five days' time I had to get in my car and drive down to KZN to go and fetch them and bring them back. And then I had to have my shit together. So I allowed myself to wallow in that depression for five days but to be honest, I probably would still, well, I wouldn't be there because I had no money to pay for them in the house. I would have been out in the street. But I would have stayed there. I would have stayed in that bed, hoping and praying that something was going to happen. But nothing was happening. And then I heard about a job through a friend whose friend applied for the job. And I knew the guy that owned the company. So it's an audio company. They compose music for ads. And they do final mix. And I was like, I've been in music. I know what I'm doing. And I phoned him and I said to him, tell me about this job. And he gave me all the specs. And I was like, I have to get this job. Because I cannot freelance anymore. I'm going to spiral out of control in terms of debt, in terms of trying to pay for things. I have to actually get a permanent job. And it was, a, it was really soul destroying because I really wanted to freelance. I loved working for different people. I loved working for different companies, doing different things. And he said all of the specs on the job and half of them I didn't know what he was talking about and I just said to him, I've just ticked all your boxes. I'm the person that you need to hire for this job. And he started laughing at me and he's like, Kath, I'm getting on a plane to go to London. When I come back, let's meet. And I said, OK, great. So I waited for him to get back. And I had a Skype call with him. And, and honestly, I, I, I really bullshit my way through that interview. I just I knew I was going to be amazing at this job. And that's all that mattered. I could learn all the other stuff. I had the basics of production, so it didn't really like, that didn't stress me out. But I'd never worked in advertising and commercials and any of that. And I remember him asking me, what would I bring? And I said, what would I bring when I walked in that door? And I said to him, good energy. I'm sure that's not the answer that he was looking for. <laughs> but. He was like, no one has ever said that, and that's what we actually need. And I got the job, and so I have now been at a permanent job for the last year. I have learned so much. I failed maths at school. I have now been doing quotes and working out percentages for licensing and usage and whatnot. But everything that I've learned over the years has culminated in me now working here. And the reason that I'm telling you this whole long journey is the fact that I know for a fact that everyone's sitting here. Some of you might have amazing like, opportunities, but a lot of you are desperate. Desperate to break into the scene. Desperate to try and get a job. I get messages from my students constantly about the fact that like, they can't break into the industry. And how do they break in the, into the industry? And I want to tell you that at the age of 40, I went through exactly the same thing with all of the experience. And just backtracking to, so when I left 5FM, I actually got calls from Anele to come and produce her show at 947, it, uh, for Fat Joe at East Coast, um, Rian from Jacaranda. And I was like, Yo, oh, look at me now. <laughs> but I had to also still be honest about the fact that I had the burnout. And I went and I helped Anele for a month while she looked for a new producer. And it, was, it just cemented the fact that I had burnout. 
that I still wasn't like creatively giving my best. So I think to be honest with yourself, when you need to make a change is important. And I know we'll touch a little bit later on like finances um, in the Q&A and how to prepare yourself, but having a plan, doing different things to be able to like make the money. If you are a musician, get a full-time job. I'm being serious. The amount of times that I've seen musicians, their one song gets playlisted on radio, they quit their job, I've got it. <laughs> then we're scraping together, trying to find money to pay rent, trying to find money. You can't even like write another, you can't even record another song. So it is really important to have other things to do outside of your passions. Radio, if you're interested in radio, have other things. Like I was lucky enough, and I mean, I know that there's lots of DJs out there, but I was lucky enough to have a brand and was able to DJ. I'm still DJing. I'm still going to festivals and emceeing. And yes, I am super lucky when it comes to that. It's because I've built up these beautiful relationships over the years. And I cannot stress enough how when you start your career, don't ever think that you are bigger than what you are. Stay humble and true to who you are because further down the line, you are going to need a favor from someone. I remember when I started with my live show where we had live musicians in studio and this guy was kept on hanging around and he came and asked me if he could perform on my show. And what I used to do with the hip hop artists when they performed on the show, I would have an up and coming hip hop artist that could come and perform like two tracks and then the main act. And this guy was like begging, begging, come please, can I do it? And I was like, cool, come and do it. And his name was AKA. And I worked recently on an event where he was busy getting ready to go onto stage and the company that I was freelancing for wanted to do an interview with him. And he said, I'm not, I don't want to do any interviews. I just want to chill with this. And then they said, Catherine's doing the interview. And he said, no problem. I'll do the interview. Those are the relationships that will last forever. And those are the people that you can like call on and ask a favor. Can I interview you on my show, etc., etc. Seriously, build those relationships. Be a kind person. The amount of times that I've seen other people burn bridges because they think that they're bigger than they are. And the reality out there is that you are a flash in the pan. You can have success the one day and the next day you're begging someone to even read your email with your CV. So it's really a huge thing is to be, build these beautiful relationships with people and, and it will help you further down the line. So that is really why a very, very big thing that I want to stress today is those relationships. Um, then in terms of brand, so I was lucky enough to build my brand and I also used to teach this to my radio students in terms of know who you are. Find out who you are in terms of what you stand for, what you believe in, and stay true to that. Don't try and be someone else. Because know for a fact that there are 10 other people trying to be AKA. And there is only one AKA. Start with who you are, what you believe in, and carry that through. It's really, really important. And if you start building up a following in whatever you are doing, and brands come to you and they want you to do some social media influencer stuff, <coughs> make sure that what they stand for, you stand for. Because yes, the money looks amazing. The money looks incredible. I once did a social media campaign with a company and 
it was only afterwards that I did the research on the company and realized that they were like tearing down forests and doing all of this stuff, which went completely a, like across my brand. I believe, I'm a hippie, I believe in the environment, I believe in all of that. And I burnt myself because people questioned me, how could you allow yourself to do that? And it was one of the biggest things I regret in my career. If you don't drink alcohol, and you are vocal about not drinking alcohol, don't align yourself with a brand, an alcohol brand. Because people are going to number one question that you are just taking it for the money. People are not stupid. They see through that. So you want to make sure that you align yourself with a brand that you believe in, that you can honestly put out information on social media. So that's really important in terms of building your brand. Um, you also have to start looking at what people aren't doing, what they are doing, how you can make it better or more interesting. One of my students sitting right here in the front, I remember her on her Instagram started this thing called Insta Radio. I see you haven't carried on with it. <laughs> but it was so refreshing and so amazing. She did like a little question and then people were commenting. People want to talk about stuff and that's why radio is so amazing because it's this platform where other people can't hear, uh, see you, right? They don't know who you are, so you're able to be honest. These are the sort of things that we need to look at because it is so difficult to get into the industry. So you've got to start thinking about those sort of things. I have another friend, a young guy that like mailed me when I was still on 5FM and he was doing these motivational Mondays. And what he used to do was he would make a recording of himself on his cell phone and then put that out to his entire WhatsApp group. So in essence, it was like a short little radio snippet and he would send it out. This kid was doing it when he was 17. He's now, he's been overseas with the Nelson Mandela Foundation. He's been an influencer on a whole bunch of different campaigns. He put the stuff out on his WhatsApp group. There are ways to be able to get your music out there and to get your radio stuff out there. And I'm gonna be touching on both, who's here for music, by the way? And who's here for radio? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna to be touching on both. Um, so that's just like a little background sort of about my journey. And then I wanted to chat about um, getting your music playlisted on radio. Now, I think this is probably one of the hardest things in the entire world, honestly. And I've worked in radio. I've seen how this whole, whole situation works, how many songs get submitted, how there's too little time to listen to all the songs, etc. So my advice to you is obviously know your brand, okay? What music are you putting out? Then do your research in terms of where you want that song to go. If you are doing hip hop, right? You're not sending your track to Classic FM. I cannot tell you how like, often people make this mistake. How many times heavy rock bands would mail me and say to me, why won't 5FM playlist my track? And I'm like, have you listened to the station? We don't play heavy rock. You need to find a radio station that does play heavy rock. So you have to do the research and I know um, that it takes time. But ta take the time to like make a list of all the radio stations. Have a listen to the radio stations. Hear what they are playing. Listen to the radio station and see which presenters are actually interested in music. Because gone are the days when radio DJs just were there for music, when they had their playlist when they could put on music that they wanted to play. 
It's not, there's a whole system. The station has a brand. The station has specific types of music that they want to play. There's a committee, a playlisting committee, or there's one person that decides on what's going to get played. And so you have to look at where you are going to align yourself and where your music fits. A really important thing is that you must remember that most of these radio stations, they have firewalls, which means you cannot send them a 20 meg file. It's never gonna get there. When you do your MP3 of your music, make sure it's under five megabytes. And then say to, in your mail, you can say to them, if you would like a bigger file, please let me know and I can send it via we transfer or whatever the case is. But seriously, under five megabytes and label the file with your artist name and the song name. I used to get loads and loads of demos. And often I would just put them, I would drag the MP3 into a folder to listen to later. Now I can't find because it just says song. <laughs> now, it's amazing. I want to contact the person and say, let's, let me try and playlist this track. Can't remember, hundreds of emails. So label the track with your artist name and the song name, under five megabytes, and then find out, you have to do the research in terms of every radio station. Who do you need to contact? What are the processes? When you write the email, make it as friendly as possible. You want to try and get this person that is reading the mail on your side. You want your song playlisted. Not, please playlist. Right? Give some information about yourself and make sure that they have all of your details so they're able to contact you. So on that note, I'm going to quickly chat about publishing your songs. All right. So when it comes to radio station, you do need the ISRC code. Um, they have to have that code and you get it from Risa. Now I know over the last however many years, there's been a lot of bad talk about Samro, Sampra, Risa, Capasso. It's getting better. They are making it way easier for you to register with them. So register with Risa, get your code, right? Because radio stations will not playlist your music without the code. Okay, so that's really, really important. Then register with Samro. Register with Sampra. Register with Capasso. Okay? It's really important to have all of your details there so that you can get royalties. I don't know how many bands that I've spoken to and artists that are established, that have lost out on royalties because they were just like, oh, it's fine. I don't need to register. I know it's like a pain to go and sit on a website, fill in a form, etc., And you're not sure if you're gonna get royalties. But what if you do? What if your song does get playlisted? Another important thing is that if you are writing music with someone else, so there's two of you, right? Make sure that you have your publishing details sorted in terms of percentages. There's a very famous story, and I honestly cannot remember the name of the band, but it was a famous South African band that wrote a whole album and the one song they were like, should we put it on? No, I don't know, I don't know. And the one guy was like, please let's put it on. And they were like, okay, cool, you can just say that you wrote it. <laughs> so he was like, okay, cool. It was the biggest song on the entire album. So he got all the royalties. He's still getting the royalties and the rest of the band. You can't change it after the fact. Who here is a singer? 
right? So you sing on other people's tracks. I have a very good friend of mine. She's amazing. She's been singing, she goes all around the world. She's made the fatal mistake of being friends with producers and they're like, pull into the studio, let's like quickly write a track. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So she gets to the studio, sings on the track, it's her words, her voice. Thanks babe, oh, awesome. And now, the song's blowing up, no contract. No publishing rights. <coughs> right? Honestly, even if it is your best friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mom, brother, whatever, make sure that you do a contract with them stating that you will have rights. Make sure that when they are filling in the forms for the publishing that you are involved. Be involved. Do not trust people. Because I can promise you now that when it comes to money, everybody wants it all. I don't want to share it with you. So make sure that you have completely sorted your contracts. And on contracting, there's an amazing website called Legalese, L-E-G-A-L-E-S-E, -E -E, legalese.co.za, and then you can forward slash music dash agreements. They have three free contracts on there. One is a royalty split agreement. So if you're a singer and you've got someone producing and you wrote the lyrics and you sang on the song, and they wrote the music, 50-50, right? Make sure that you sign those contracts. Another one is a booking agreement. Okay, so how many of you are DJs? Okay, a few, a lot of you obviously perform. Okay, <coughs> sign a booking agreement where it states that if they cancel the gig, you're going to get a cancellation fee. Don't forget those things. Make sure that you don't leave it up to the organizer of the event. Don't wait there for an agreement from them. You have to take hold of your career. You have to be responsible for yourself. And I've learned the hard way. I was DJing for years. Trust, trust, oh. Then the gig gets canceled and I could have had another gig. Now I'm uh, no money because I didn't get them to sign a contract. Okay, so make sure that. And then the last one is the licensing agreement. Okay, so make sure that if you are in the music industry, that you have these agreements that you can send it out and make sure that they sign it. Um, the Capasso Samro Sampra, right? Read up on what you can get. Do you know that if you play at a music festival, the music festival should have <coughs> forms for you to fill in for each song that you played so you can get royalties. If you get to go overseas, you do the same thing. Because there is a SAMRO overseas, right? It's not our SAMRO, but it's an international, whichever country you're in. They then have the form with all the tracks you've played, they send it to SAMRO, you can get royalties. I know that there's been a lot of stuff in, around about the SABC, about royalties. So I've been saying it for years, because I mean, I've, we've, we've known for years it's, that they haven't paid SAMRO. So the chances are of you getting any royalties from the SABC is zero. Be aware of these things. We have to, as artists, as musicians, 
What are we doing about it? We just want our track playlisted, right? We just want it to be on Metro, on 5FM. But the bottom line is, is that they're actually not respecting musicians. I truly believe that. Because if they did respect the musicians, they would be paying those Samro fees. So that whole 90% thing, everyone was like, woo, this is amazing. My song's gonna get played. There's no royalties. Maybe you got a gig. The bottom line is, is that they actually aren't respecting us as artists and musicians. And I think it's a really important thing to remember that we need to start standing up for ourselves. We need to start questioning these things. Um, in terms of radio, if you are doing podcasts, let's say for instance, and you play songs on your podcast, please remember that you cannot make it a downloadable link. Okay? So, <coughs> the, that music doesn't belong to you. Even if you bought it. I bought it on iTunes. Okay, cool. It's not yours. You cannot allow other people to download it. So please remember that, that don't make it downloadable. People can then listen to it because you will get into trouble. And also make sure that if you decide you're going to get a group of friends together, you're all in radio and you're going to start a digital radio station. Because there's lots of free software out there to be able to start a radio station. It doesn't cost you very much to actually start a digital radio station. Make sure that if you are going to play music on that radio station, that you have a Capasso <coughs> license. That you are filling in the forms and sending them through so that people can get their royalties. I find it so like, incredibly um, almost depressing that people that love music, supposedly, will download illegally. They'll just play it on their station, etc. Right? We have to respect that we need to pay for stuff. I put in, if I was a musician and I put in hours on working on a track, I want to get some money back, right? Because what am I doing this for? In terms of music and writing songs, this space is absolutely incredible. The fact that you have access to a studio, who could, as, as a musician, who could ask for more? Because let's be honest. How much does it cost to record an album or a song? <coughs> hey? Thousands. Thousands and thousands. And who has that money? Not me. Right? These sort of spaces are absolutely magnificent. They are helping up and coming artists. I also want to say that if you are planning on spending money at a studio to write tracks, have a listen to what that studio has done before. Okay? Make sure that they are amazing. Do not spend 5,000 Rand on making one album. Right? It's, it's like physically impossible to hire a studio space with a, like someone that is amazing. You want someone that is amazing. 5,000 Rand is not going to get you amazing. These are the facts. Rather decide, I'm gonna choose these two tracks and I'm gonna spend 5,000 Rand on recording two tracks instead of 12. Okay. Um, and as I said, like make sure that it sounds amazing. Because I can promise you now, if you send that track to a radio station, what's gonna happen? They're gonna hear the bad recording Sorry, we can't play it. Now I've already spent my money. You have to be on the pulse of what is happening. Just think about like the music genres in South Africa. How it's changing. Constantly. Right? New ones come in. So we can't be making a track 
So what's, what's big at the moment? I'm a, I'm a piano, right? So now, is drum, it's already like fading, right? Right? But it's evolving, so it might have some sounds of dom in it, but it's different. Don't be sitting there like back three years ago with that sound. You have to start making sure that you are with it, that you know what's happening in the industry. Because where do you want your stuff to be played? On radio, right? On TV. What are our other options when it comes to playlisting or getting your music out there? Pardon? Music festivals, right? <coughs> Find out who is doing the music festival. Who can you submit your songs to? Do the research on the music festival, right? If you're a quieter artist, we can't be playing there at Lift a Baby Dumb. <laughs> Don't waste the person's time, right? Am I right? Make sure that the, the music that you play aligns with the festival. Send it to them. Try and find out where their offices are. Go and show face. Go and invite them to one of your gigs. Send them a video of one of your gigs. The best one, right? <laughs> Pretend that there's hundreds of people there. Make sure that your friend is filming from the front. We don't need a crowd in the background. Make sure that your performance is amazing. And while we're on that, actually, sorry, I will like, as I speak, I will like think of other things. Um, I once was emceeing an event where it was these amazing up and coming artists. Okay, loads of people there. People that you wanted to watch you at this event. And the one girl that I was really excited to see, she came to me, she's like, do you have a charger? Do you have a charger? I'm like, I don't, but you're about to perform. So like, well, what do you need? My music's on my phone. <laughs> you guys laugh, right? This girl was playlisted on radio. She's been performing at events with her cell phone, which is totally fine, right? But how is it possible that you cannot be prepared? We know cell phones. We know the battery dies. There are Instagram five things, battery dying now. I've just told everyone I'm performing, but I can't. Make sure that you contact the event, make sure that you have the right equipment. Ask them, do you have a computer? Can I bring a USB stick with my music on? Make sure that you have a backup, right? Be 100% prepared. I remember chatting to a band that was performing at Opikopi as like, um, on the main stage for the first time. They'd been performing at the festival numerous times, but now they were performing on the main stage. They phoned the festival organizer. They asked the festival organizer, who is doing the lighting and sound? Please give me their contact details. They messaged and called the sound guy and said, we're going to be rehearsing next week for Opikopi. Could we pay you to come to our studio so that you can like know exactly how our sound setup works. They then wrote a whole list of exactly what they wanted in terms of their lighting. It was spectacular, the show. But they made the effort because they wanted it to be spectacular. They spent the extra bit of money to hire that sound engineer to come for an hour to watch their rehearsal. Right? So it's be about being prepared, doing your research, making sure that the equipment that you have is going to work, making sure that you are there an hour before your show. <coughs> I went to a festival this last weekend, and 
you know, often you're like there for the lineup, right? I look at the lineup and I'm like, oh, I can sleep in a little bit because I don't really want to see that act. So I'll get there for that act. I get there, this act is nowhere to be seen. Right? I'm friends with the festival organizers. I can hear, have you found her yet? Have you found her? No, no. Have you found her? No, no, no. <laughs> right? So the other band that was playing after then had to push forward because we can't have an empty stage. So they get pushed forward. What happens then is that people that were sleeping in to come and watch that band an hour later miss that band. She then comes and performs. She had two gigs that day. She missed her second one because she was late for the first one. It's so disrespectful for not only the people that are paying you, because I can assure you she was getting a lot of money, but to your fans, the people that have come to watch. And that's where it comes back to being humble and a real human being and never forgetting who you are and where you started. Respect your fans. They are the ones that will buy your album. They are the ones that will come to the next concert. They are the ones that will buy your outfits, your hats, etc. Where you're going to try and make some money, right? Because the SABC is not paying you royalties. <laughs> so it is an extremely exciting time in South Africa in terms of radio and what is happening and all the changes and the fact that digital is starting to creep in. Yes, we have no data. Yes, because it is so damn expensive. So we often can't listen to digital radio. But I firmly believe that it is going to get cheaper and it is going to make a difference that you are starting to look at perhaps doing a digital radio station. Yes, the landscape and the beauty of the music industry is magical. The stuff that is happening in South Africa is just like, it blows my mind every single day. The stuff that I hear from people that have recorded their music in their bedrooms, they are on Fruity Loops, right? It's incredible. The fact that we have a space like this, the fact that we are able to sit here today and you, singer, might be looking for another producer to make an, a hit track, right? 50-50 split is somewhere here. Meet people, talk to people. Find another person that's perhaps starting out with video. Sound, make friends. We're all battling, so let's like, try and like, make the split of the 100 Rand that we make at the door. We each get 20, right? Because let's be honest, we can't make a music video with someone that costs like 50,000 Rand. We have to start working together. We have to start building these relationships. We have to start looking at who is on radio that's really interested in music that you can start a conversation with, that you can mail them, and hopefully they will give you a response. Remember, we're not mailing every five minutes, eh? We're not bugging them. We're not going to drive them insane, where they block you on Twitter and Instagram. We're occasionally messaging and saying, please listen to my track. My track is amazing, it's like, creeping around on Twitter and people are listening and people are starting to talk about it. Don't lose out on not listening to my track and playlisting it on your radio station. Be the first one to playlist my song because it's amazing. We need to think about how we word things. Please don't slide into someone's DMs, ha. Huh. Okay. Be upfront, say, I am a musician and give the details. Not hi. Maybe they come back and say hi. How are you? No, <laughs> done, right? And then obviously if you go out to gigs, start seeing who's up and coming. 
and start asking them, can I play before you? Can I get on the lineup? Maybe say to them, don't have to pay me anything. Just want to be the opening act. Right? We have to start somewhere. We have to start building up by using other people's fans to come and listen to us. But it is an exciting time. It is doable, but bear in mind that it is also so hard. Do not for one moment think that it's easy. I remember just one quick last story. I remember a guy sending me his track, a demo. For two years we worked on that demo, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Try this, change this. Now by the time the song is sounding good, we're already on to I'm a piano because that genre is finished. Now we must change the track. <laughs> but he pursued until he found the right sound that worked for that track. And can I tell you, he's now putting out amazing songs. And be on, get people to be honest with you, right? Not your mom. <laughs> I'm sure my students are going to remember this story. I always told it. Like, you know, you know idols, yeah. the wooden mic. <coughs> you know, all those people, they sang for their mom and they said that they were amazing. <laughs> you have to find someone that is going to be honest with you about your music. That, and when someone says to you, listen, I think you should go for vocal training. Do not go back to them and say, screw you, everyone's told me, I can sing. <laughs> then don't ask anybody for opinions, right? I had that once where I said to the guy, because I could have said to him, stop singing. You're not a singer. But there was some potential there. And if he went for vocal training, he would have been better. His songwriting was quite good. I said to him, you should think about either going for vocal training or maybe selling your songs to other people to sing. Worst thing in the world. Came back with the most disgusting email. And I was like, don't ask opinions then. Right? So you're going to have to be hard about it because it's going to hurt. You're going to get feedback and it's not the feedback that you perhaps want. But listen to what the person is saying and try and make it better. Okay, but I'm excited for the future. The one thing I miss out of like going and doing a permanent job is teaching. I miss it every single day. Share your knowledge. If you've failed at something and then you've gotten back up and you have like made it work, share that knowledge with other people. That's the only way we're going to build and the only way we're going to learn and the only way we're going to succeed. Thank you, everybody.